Okay, another quick uh, video on a poem. This one's Sonnet 29, I Think of Thee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Um, did come up last year on the exam, so unlikely to come up again this year. Not, not impossible, but as such, I think it's a really good one to revise. Yeah, and it, and it really covers that idea of um, a romantic relationship that's sort of successful and positive, and it sort of is a good example of that, I think. Okay, so as, as usual, we're just going to go through what's happening in the poem and then hit all of our assessment objectives. So get some AI3 for the context, um, AI1 for the key ideas and feelings, and then we picked one quote that we think is the best one you can analyse the language of to get you some marks for AI2. So here's the poem this you better read it, because it's a lady. Stuff. Okay. I think of thee, my thoughts do twine and bud about thee as wild vines about a tree. Put out broad leaves, and soon there's naught to see except the straggling green which hides the wood. Yet, O oh my palm tree, be it understood, I will not have my thoughts instead of thee, who art dearer, better. Rather, instantly renew thy presence, as a strong tree should. Rustle thy boughs, and set thy trunk all bare, and let these bands of greenery which ensphere thee drop heavily down, burst shattered everywhere because in this deep joy to see and hear thee and breathe within thy shadow a new air i do not think of thee i am too near thee what's it about so it's a, a new relationship um and she finds that she can't stop thinking about her partner she worries that because all she's doing is thinking about him that she's losing her sense of self um, and who she is as a person that that's kind of getting all wrapped up in just her obsessive thoughts about him she comes to the conclusion that the way that she'll fix that problem is that she'll be physically with him and that way she won't just have to think about him or she won't have to think about him because he'll physically be there um it's a bit of a racy poem isn't it it's a bit especially of the time yeah so it's um... unconventional for she she talks about well she suggests that she wants to have sex with him which is definitely not what we expect of a woman in the Victorian era. I think she's allowed to get away with it because it's hidden through this extended metaphor. Mm. Um, and you can all, you can deny it, can't you, if you make a metaphor? Yeah. Sexy tree. <laughs> uh, so she was uh, Eliz uh, an English poet, a uh, romantic movement, but living in the Victorian age. Um, she wrote uh, a lot of love sonnets. Uh, all sonnets are, tend to be about love, but um, she, did, she wrote 44. Uh, they became very popular. She was a successful writer. Um, she married Robert Browning. They wrote Porphyria's Lover, um, but she was really insecure about it. She she hadn't she didn't marry young at all. Her father was against it. She married late, and she was older than him, which really was unusual for Victorian times. Yeah, five or six years older. Yeah, and the man was supposed to be this sort of dominant, mm -hmm. uh, take the dominant role. And she wrote the poem for him and didn't expect it to be published. So this is sort of a, a cheeky little message to her fella. Yeah, it's sort of private, isn't it? Okay, so a little bit lengthier in the context, but it's because it's sort of it's a Victorian poet and, and so there's sort of a bigger background to it, I guess. So Barrett Browning wrote these poems for her partner before they were married. Um, they weren't supposed to be published and read by other people, so they're really private personal poems um, but Browning thought they were excellent and that they should publish them that they were so good they needed to be published um, and so in order to sort of hide the fact that some of the things that she's talking about are unexpected of a woman in the Victorian times they called them sonnets from the Portuguese um, the idea that they translated these Portuguese poems um, that wasn't the case and I think people saw through it the fact that it wasn't the case but they did try and sort of conceal it and then that links to the second point because in the victorian era sexual desires were repressed you weren't supposed to have sexy feelings um, and women were expected to have no interest in having sex other than as a way of making babies um, and then this poem sort of disputes that idea because she just fancies him Yeah, so we look at uh, some AI1 quotes. So it's this, as 
uh, she just said she fancied him, but it's overwhelming. It's it's sort of um, at all she can think about. It's all encompassing. She says my thoughts do twine and bud about thee, um, and soon there's naught to see. Like her thoughts about him are just just everything are becoming over over overwhelming. Like it says on the thing. Um, I think there's a sense that she's successful, um, a successful writer, and an older woman. And now she's just obsessively thinking about this person. And, and I think her sense of identity would be quite strong because she's older and successful in her own right. And, and therefore there's a she's overwhelmed by her feelings, but also a frustration. The fact that all she's doing is thinking about him. It's like a surprise that it's, yeah. it's crept up on her. Yeah. Okay, and another feeling... Um, intense romantic or sexual love so it'll be up to you how confident you feel in talking about um, the sexy stuff um, but the romantic stuff is definitely there as well um, so renew thy presence as a strong tree should this idea that she wants him back with her this intense feeling that she has that she wants to be with him this idea is you know with the extended metaphor of the tree that he's this strong tree like really hyper masculine and that she really sort of wants to be with him and then uh, a sexier one, set thy trunk all bare. So this idea that she's want, wanting him to take off some of his clothes um, definitely has that idea of, of sexual connotations. And we could just say there are sexual connotations. You don't need to be explicit. A lot of the examiners are elderly. They don't need that. Um, but it's definitely there. Um, and, it's, and it's OK to talk about romantic and sexual ideas together. And this is the AO2 quote. Another great quote. A really so good one. So easy to remember. Loads to say about it. Yeah, so really short, which is great. Um, and yeah, lots and lots to say. I just like the, the expression of the oh. Mm, oh like unexpected. It's, uh, yeah, like she can't even vocalise what she's thinking. It's just, just that sort of noise of passion. <laughs> nice. Okay, <laughs> so there's the possessive pronoun my, um, which I think is a is a proud feeling. This idea that you know she's she's got to quite late. I feel I, I'm struggling to say that she's late in her life, which is 38, but <laughs> she's a little bit older, um, and she's sort of proud of this this man that she's she's desperately in love with, and and it's reciprocated. And there's a sense that of that sort of pride, I think, in that in that pronoun fits into the extended metaphor of the tree that goes all the way through, sort of takes that idea that, that, that does start right at the very beginning with the thoughts twining and budding and, and goes all the way through the poem and obviously this is part of that. It's an exotic, unusual, palm trees are not native to Britain where she's from, um, so the idea is this palm trees is not like the indigenous trees, so it's not like the other men. Uh, that she's met before is different it's exotic exciting singular like it's just my palm tree not any not any plural the trees and palm trees are often you know you, you don't get a forest of palm trees they are more likely to be singular and it's this one man this this particular person we know it's autobiographical she's talking about browning um and she singles him out that he, he's different to the other men he's not like a Victorian man maybe. Uh, lots of symbolism for the tree. Um, so for Romans it was a symbol of victory and triumph if you'd won a battle. The uh, palm tree would, would be that symbol that you'd won and I always think this is her feeling that she's sort of won this man that she feels she's like won at life because she loves him so much she's so proud of him she's so sort of pleased with this man and also that it would have been, I would guess, in the Victorian times, being in your late thirties as a woman, you might think maybe I'm not going to get married, mm -hmm. maybe I'm not going to have that relationship. It's, it's the, the palm tree in the desert image, isn't it? That that it's been nothing. She hasn't had. It's not like she's 38. It's a second or third long-term mm -hmm. relationship. It's been very, very nothing, and then this this one remarkable man's turned up. Um, for Christians, it's a symbol of faith and belief. Um, 
and she has faith in him and she believes in this love this connection between the two of them that it's and that that it's a christian symbol that somehow it's sort of more important than just not just a connection but you know like at a biblical level like a deep belief and faith in this amazing he thing. believes it she believes in him yeah. she believes it like she's not deifying him as such but no. she believes that he's the right one for yeah. her she believes in the power of their relationship shall i do this one do this one okay, songs, so. yeah. in the bible song of songs it's one of the lesser known books of the bible this is your and another thing or mm-hmm. additionally this don't go don't start with this on any paragraph but it's your when you're thinking about how to develop your paragraphs it's that extra bit of thing that you might want to add in your examiner might even need to google it because Mm -hmm. in songs of songs um in the bible the palm tree is used to represent this sexual longing or sexual desire in a marriage we haven't put the um i'm not the the full full quote um google it by all means (laughs) if you want to but it says you are tall and supple like the palm tree and then it goes on to talk about physical attributes um, <laughs> as part of a metaphor which we won't we don't need we to we don't need to but it's there it's there and then lastly the you last already thing, said yeah, it the, the, it's a tree that grows in a yeah. desert she's it's that uh, her life has been just without feature if you like um without romantic feature yes obviously she's been very successful personally but when it comes to romance she's just not met anyone like him and it just makes him seem like it stands out even more. 